food scientists, technologists, and engineers use water activity to assess the preservation of foods, considering microbial, chemical, and physical stability during its storage and processing. What is the origin of water activity? In this video, I am going to explain the origin of water activity and its measurement. Please watch this video until the end and subscribe to this channel if you would like to watch similar videos. We know water activity indicates the energy state of water in a food and it is related to the chemical potential of water. Foods are then equilibrated with atmospheric air. At equilibrium, chemical potentials of water in food and air are equal. A fugacity term in the chemical potential equation of air is then introduced. The fugacity term is then considered nearly equal to the vapor pressure of water in the air. Vapor pressure is then related to the water activity and similarly water activity is equal to the relative humidity of the surrounding air. I am going to explain all these terms and how these are interrelated. First, we can start with the energy state of water. We can visualize the energy state from the vibrational, rotational and translational motions of a molecule that is water. Therefore, higher energy state indicates high level of molecular motion or mobility that is more reactivity and availability for the microbes. We can see water inside the sample boundary are at different energy states as marked black, green and red. Water molecules within the sample boundary can try to escape or water from outside can also enter into the sample. This exchange depends on the chemical potential of water on both sides. Chemical potential is the driving force in this process. Now the chemical potential of water inside a food can be written as mu w equal to mu w naught plus rt ln a w where mu w is the chemical potential of the water inside the food that is thermodynamic activity or water energy of a food. mu w naught is the chemical potential of pure water at temperature T. R is the gas constant and A W is the water activity of a food. We can now consider water food vapor interaction. At a constant temperature, all components and water in food are in thermodynamic equilibrium with each other in both the adsorb and vapor phases. At the equilibrium state of water inside the food and outside air, the chemical potential of water inside and outside air are equal. That is, chemical potential inside food equal to chemical potential of water in air. The chemical potential of water in air can be written as mu w equal to mu w naught plus rt ln f w divided by f w naught. Where f w is the fugacity or the escaping tendency of water in food, f w naught is the escaping tendency of pure water. For practical purposes, under most conditions in which foods are found, the fugacity is closely approximated by the vapor pressure. Therefore, Fw by Fw0 equal to Pw by Pw0 equal to Aw. Therefore, fugacity ratio is similar to the vapor pressure ratios and it is equal to water activity as we define water activity as the ratio of the vapor pressure of water in food and vapor pressure of pure water and it is defined at a constant temperature. 
When vapor and temperature equilibrium are obtained, the water activity of the sample is equal to the relative humidity of the air surrounding the sample in an air-tight chamber. Relative humidity of air is defined as the ratio of the vapor pressure of water in air to its saturation vapor pressure. That is, it is the water content in air relative to its maximum water holding capacity. Therefore, in most of the experimental instruments, the equilibrium of relative humidity is measured to represent the water activity of a food. Now we can transform this concept of equilibrium process by simple experimental setup. We have created a specific relative humidity atmosphere inside a desiccator at constant temperature. We know a saturated solution can create a specific relative humidity atmosphere. For example, we have placed a saturated sodium chloride solution at the bottom of the desiccator. A layer of salt crystals at the bottom can ensure the saturated condition during the experimental period. We can mention here that saturated sodium chloride can maintain a relative humidity atmosphere of 0.75, that is water activity of 0.75. Now we can place a food sample inside the desiccator to equilibrate. After equilibration, we know the equilibrium moisture content of the sample at relative humidity of 0.75, which is the water activity of the sample. This method is called isopistic method. However, the equilibrium moisture content will not be the same as the sample moisture content due to loss or gain of moisture during the equilibrium process. For example, if the sample contains high moisture and relative humidity of the chamber is 0.1, then a significant moisture will be lost to reach water activity of 0.1. One. We want to measure the water activity of the sample at its moisture content. This method has this problem. We want to measure water activity of the sample, not the equilibrium moisture content at 0.75. In this case, we need to measure moisture absorption isotherm that is relationship of the equilibrium moisture as a function of water activity at a constant temperature. After then we can predict the water activity of the sample at any moisture content. In another video I will explain the moisture absorption isotherm. This problem can be avoided in commercial water activity measurement instruments. In commercial water activity measurement, a small chamber and a sensor is used to measure the relative humidity of the air after equilibration. When a small chamber with low head space is used, then moisture loss from the sample would be minimal to reach equilibrium within the head space. It would be small as compared to the big chamber used in the isopistic method as discussed earlier. Sample size also need to be adequate to consider that moisture loss could be considered minimal. In addition, in this instrument, we are not equilibrating a sample at any specific relative humidity. We'll just equilibrate with the air in the chamber and the measured relative humidity by a sensor. We can easily measure equilibrium air humidity of the atmosphere and it is the water activity of the sample as measured. Different types of sensors are being used commercially. You may ask why we don't measure vapor pressure directly. We can but due to the complexity and difficulty of the measurement, it is rarely used. 
In summary, the energy state is related to the chemical potential and then it is related to the fugacity. Fugacity is then related to the vapor pressure and vapor pressure is then related to the water activity as well as relative humidity of the air surrounding the sample. I would like to thank you for watching the video until the end.